Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 21 of the chapter Hydrocarbons. In the previous video, I started discussing the methods of preparation of alkenes and I told you that there are four methods of preparation of alkenes, one of which is an addition reaction and the other three are elimination reactions. So in the previous video, we did the one which was an addition reaction, that is, we prepared alkenes from alkynes. Let me just recapitulate that a little. This was an alkyne and if an alkene had to be prepared from it, you had to add hydrogen to it. So one of the bonds would break and any bond is nothing but a pair of electrons. A pair of electrons contributed by both the carbons and or, or both the atoms which are bound together. So when this bond breaks, both the carbons, they get back their electron and Hydrogen atoms are added on the two sides, so this reduction process takes place and the two hydrogens add and you get the alkene. I'm not going into the details, but this is what basically happened. We are not going into the conditions of the reaction or how do we carry out this process, but this is what happens. So the opposite of this would be, uh, would be the elimination reaction. Here it was addition and the opposite would be elimination which means if I want to prepare an alkene, this is the final product that I need. It means that the two carbon atoms must be having a single bond between them. And whatever these atoms are, they could be hydrogens, they could be something else, you have to remove two of these atoms. So both the carbons must lose one atom each. And therefore, whatever shared pair of electrons they had with that atom, they get back that electron. And once they get back that electron, so let us assume that this hydrogen leaves and carbon gets back its electron. This hydrogen leaves and carbon gets back its electron. So both the carbons now have their own electrons. They share this pair of electrons and results in the formation of an alkene. So basically, this is what we are trying to do here. But these two atoms, as I showed you, the ones that left were hydrogen and hydrogen. But when you have alkyl halides, when you're getting it from alkyl halides, what you lose is one of the carbons has a halogen atom attached to it and one of them has a hydrogen. So what you lose here is a halogen atom from one carbon atom and a hydrogen atom from the other carbon atom. So the, for example, if this is chlorine, it will result in the formation of HCl. It'll, it is the removal of the halogen acid. If it was bromine, it would be hydrogen bromide. So the halogen acid is removed and this, since it is removed, it is an elimination reaction. So what is happening? The same thing is happening. This bond is going to break. This bond is going to break. The hydrogen and the halogen are going to leave and the two carbons are going to share that pair of electrons and result in the formation of the alkene. So let us now see how this process takes place. Alkyl halides on heating with alcoholic potash. What is alcoholic potash? It is potassium hydroxide which is dissolved in alcohol. Alcoholic potash. Now this is the uh, th this is the what um, the catalyst for the reaction. And you heat it. Alkyl halides on heating with alcoholic potash, that is potassium hydroxide dissolved in alcohol, eliminates one molecule of halogen acid. It eliminates one molecule of halogen acid to give alkenes. And since a hydrogen and a halogen are being lost, this is known as D hydrohalogenation. D means removal, hydro means hydrogen, halogen is halogen of course, it could be chlorine, bromine, iodine. So it is the removal of a hydrogen and the halogen. So it is this reaction is also named as dehydrohalogenation reaction and it has another name which is known as the beta elimination reaction. You know what an alpha position is? An alpha carbon is one to which a substituent or the functional group is attached. So since it is a halogen which is attached here, since it is a haloalkane, that carbon to which the halogen is attached is an alpha carbon, right? And the carbon next to it on either side, if you have two carbon atoms, let us say this was not hydrogen, it was carbon, then both of these would have been beta carbons, right? So the elimination 
is a beta elimination reaction. We know if you want to get an alkene from an alkyl halide, it is obvious that the halogen will be lost because you need an alkene, not a haloalkene. So the halogen is being lost, but the hydrogen that has to be lost has to be from the carbon next to the alpha carbon. It should be the beta carbon. Only then, see, if the two carbons are neighbors, only then will they have the single electrons which they can share with each other and result in the formation of a multiple bond, that is a pi bond, a double bond. So it is necessary that this elimination that takes place of the halogen, along with it, the hydrogen should be from the beta carbon. So therefore, this is an example. This reaction is an example of beta elimination reaction. The alpha, the halogen from the alpha carbon is lost and the hydrogen from the beta carbon is lost. And then when both the carbons get their electrons after the loss of that, those two atoms, they share this pair of electrons and result in the formation of the alkene. And what is the condition of the reaction? This reaction takes place in the presence of alcoholic potash that is alcoholic potassium hydroxide and you have to heat this uh, reaction mixture. So when you heat up and uh, uh, for example it is a haloethane, it will lose the halogen from the alpha carbon and a hydrogen from the beta carbon and result in the formation of ethene. Now this is where you have only in the case of ethane, you have only one beta carbon. As I just told you that the beta carbon is any carbon which is attached to this carbon, the alpha carbon. So if there was a carbon on this side, that would also have been a beta carbon. Whenever you have such options that there can be more than one beta carbons, in that case, there is a rule, there is, a, I mean, um, the loss of the hydrogen from the beta carbon is not random. There is a rule that is followed there. And what is that rule? It is known as the Setzef rule. Well, according to the Setzef rule, during elimination reactions, the more alkylated double bond forms the major product. This is the statement of the, uh, of the rule. That during elimination reactions, when elimination reactions are taking place, the more alkylated double bond forms the major product. That carbon, that beta carbon, which will allow the alkene to be more alkylated will be favored. That one will be the major product. This can be understood from this example. The example is here that you have CH3, CH2, CH, CH3, Br. So it is 2-bromobutane. All right. This compound is 2-bromobutane. Now the carbon to which bromine is attached is the alpha carbon. These two carbons then are beta carbons. So according to this, according to this, when you put alcoholic potassium and you heat the, uh, this compound, you should get two products. What are the two products? This is the alpha carbon, but this is the beta carbon and this is the beta carbon. So if this beta carbon loses a hydrogen, you get butene, right? If the bromine was lost here and one hydrogen was lost here, you will get CH3, CH double bond, CH single bond, CH3. That is what you get. So you get butene. But if this carbon is the beta carbon, which loses a hydrogen, then the double bond will come here. So you will get but one e right? According to Setzef rule, the, that compound where the double bond is more alkylated. Now, what does that mean? Let us understand. These are the two carbons across the double bond. Take it. Now, the two carbons that are across the double bond, what are the two carbons attached to? What are the two groups that the carbon is attached to? This carbon is attached to a hydrogen and a me methyl group. This carbon is also attached to a hydrogen and a methyl group. All right, so I could maybe change the structure to show this. Okay. CH3H and CH3H. Okay. If I divide this one here, you will get... and there's a double bond between these two carbons 
and these two hydrogens can be shown as one H here and one H here. Do you see? What do you notice? For he, this uh, product, both the carbons have a methyl group here and a methyl group here and a hydrogen and a hydrogen. So both the carbons have got a methyl group or an alkyl group. In this case, the this carbon has an ethyl group attached to it and hydrogen, but this carbon is attached to only two hydrogens. There is no alkyl group. So how many alkyl groups are around the carbons, the two carbons in this product? One, two two alkyl groups and here there's only one alkyl group. So that product, now let me read the statement. During elimination reactions, the more alkylated double bond, this bond, double bond is more alkylated, it has got more alkyl groups on it. So the more alkylated double bond forms the major product. Therefore, this would be the major product, while but1ene would be the minor product. Very little of that would be produced. This is the favored reaction. This would be more stable. A symmetrical structure is always more stable. Now, if you take the nature of the halogen atom or, and the rate of the reaction, which gives a better reaction, which reacts faster, the nature of elimination, iodine atom will eliminate faster than bromine, than chlorine. Chlorine is more electronegative and iodine is the least electronegative. The size of iodine is larger, the size of chlorine is the smallest among the three halogens whose usually um, the alkyl halides usually have these three halogens. So we find that due to this, iodine is the weakest bonding with carbon. So since it has the weakest bonding with carbon, it is the easiest to leave. So the elimination in the rate of elimination, the iodine will leave first, then would be bromine is a little more strongly bound and chlorine being more electronegative, smaller in size is more compactly bound. Therefore, chlorine, if it is a chloroalkane, the beta elimination of a chloro compound would be, sm would be slower and the rate of the iodine compound would be faster. And if you see the alkyl groups that are attached to the carbon, the tertiary alkyl carbon will be, will be greater than secondary, which will be greater than primary. Did you see here? This was a primary carbon. Now, a primary carbon is here. This is a primary carbon. This carbon is a secondary carbon. This carbon is also a secondary carbon. A secondary carbon is a carbon which is attached to two other carbons. So we see that in the case of a primary carbon, the rate was less and the product was also not the major one. So wherever the rate is more, naturally that compound is winning in the race. So the secondary would give a higher rate of reaction and the tertiary would be the fastest. If they, instead of this hydrogen, this had another methyl group attached to it, this would have been even faster. So this was about the second method of preparation of uh, alkenes from alkyl halides. And with this, I'll wrap up this video. If you want to watch other videos of this chapter, please click the link uh, that appears on, your, on, on the screen. And uh, well, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.